Oh, you're so handsome. Oh my gosh, look at you, so handsome. In the Conservative caucus have um, a medical exemption. I mean, he just won't directly answer it. And it, it sort of does sort of make you think, well, why not? And I think my kitchen looks like a bomb went off in it. A new emergency. Aaron has something wrong with his elbow now. It's swollen. It looks infected. Okay, I'll tell him. Yeah, I'll write that down. Okay, 120. That was lucky. I got an appointment. Oh, hey. It's totally fucking forgot about that appointment yesterday. What appointment? Uh, Sopranos. It was yesterday? I gotta deal with this air conditioner. It's behind this desk. It's 10.30 now. I'm really glad that's done. I'm so hungry and exhausted. Tuscan white bean and kale soup that I got from Costco. Sorry to say, Costco, but your soup tastes like bloody fucking chemicals. Hey, who's here? Hi, baby. This is my big messy bunny. This is my big messy bunny who makes all the mess. Did you make a big mess? You made a big mess. I'll be honest, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing anything now. It's 12 o'clock. Now I have to go take care of Aaron. I didn't get my dishes done. Here's Aaron's apartment. I know, it looks like a mess, believe it or not. I spent all afternoon cleaning this kitchen yesterday and painting it. I've been replastering these walls and I painted. The walls get destroyed because of his chair and that stuff from his gloves that makes everything black and everything gets, you know, run into, gets chipped. I've been working on this wall. I replastered all that. I plastered here too. Hey, I'm making a video about my day. Uh, we gotta soak your elbow. Let me clean your elbow. You've gotta be up at that clinic at 120. Look in your hand. I don't know. Take this. Oh, you're too far. Huh? Here, I'll just pull you up. Huh? Oh, you're so heavy. I can't, I can't even get. Why are you so far back? Okay, just give it a few seconds here. So the elbow is really swollen. And then there's this cut right here. And I don't know, you must have gotten a little cut and then because you're always leaning on your tires, it got it got stuff in it. Yeah. And you don't even know when it happened. The it day happened. before yesterday, I, I gave you a scrubbing and you were fine. It happened yesterday. I was like, fixing something on my desk. I was like, put my elbow on something and cut it. You didn't even notice, eh? Beautiful day. Yeah. You wanted to go out? Yeah. But it's only, your appointment's only at 1.20. Though you're like, uh, you got a little bit of time, you're gonna get there. Yeah. Yeah. Gunnar just called me his uh, trip to the biodome. It's not today, it's next Friday. I guess he didn't get that. I didn't get that either. So now I gotta pick him up. I'm running late. Don't worry, you're not in it. Gunner's friend is in the car. Sorry, Gunner. Sorry, I'm so late. That's your fault. <laughs> Hi, Rock. Wait, Adam, do you wanna be filmed? No, he's a minor child. He cannot consent. I'm 14. Yeah, but you're not, you can't consent to things like, the only thing you can consent to is getting yourself vaccinated. Everything else is still up to your parents. Funny how that works. Can you not, Gunner? 
Shut up, Adam. <laughs> He's being funny. All I see is idiocy. That's normal for him. That's what he does. <laughs> it's four o'clock. I'm tired and I'm really f***ing hungry. I feel like I'm so hungry that I can't function, but I have to clean the kitchen because it's not time for dinner yet. In case you don't know, I have this hypermobility syndrome. Here's my new trick to deal with this. See, I'm wearing a corset, but it's not, it's not facing the right way. Like this is supposed to be the front over here, but I can't put it on and then lace it myself if it's facing the other way. I just put it on like this and I just lace it up to here. I could even lace it tighter, it would be better. But it's good, it like really supports your back. It would be nice if I could have it turned the right way. Actually, it's quite better with the corset. Anyway, dishes. It's done. It's as done as it's gonna be. Well, that is a big improvement. Behold! Behold how much hard work I've done. I was just thinking how much I miss Gromito. He was the rabbit that Karen found outside a while back. So of course she called Auntie Sonia, um, hoping that I would take him. Karen, Karen was hoping I would take him, and of course I did. I tried not to. I went over there. I was like, oh my god, I'm in love. The rabbit is so sweet. I just want to hold him forever. But Sonia, have some discipline. Don't take the rabbit home. So I didn't bring him home that day, but then the next day, like all night I missed the rabbit. I, I went to bed and I just thought about Gromito all night. And then the next day I called and I was like, Karen, I need that rabbit. I need to bring him home. I can't. I can't leave him with you. I just can't do it. I think she was kind of laughing. She's like, I knew this was going to happen. So I brought little Gromito to my home. And, um, oh my God, it was love. Like it was love both ways. He was in love with me and I was in love with him. He ran around, he ran around me in circles. He ran around my feet. He would follow my foot or my hand if I did this. He would jump into my arms. It was, he was just like full of love. He was like, I love you, mom. And I'd be like, I love you too, Gromito. He was my little black bat. I mean, I love my rabbits that I have now, don't get me wrong, but I'm not in love with them. But this rabbit, it was like on another level. The, but I realized quickly why someone had ditched him outside. It was because he was an unneutered male and he was spraying and he loved me so much that he sprayed me, sprayed me, splashed me. So it was totally unmanageable. The rabbit was extremely active. He was hopping up and down, up on my bed, back down, spraying piss everywhere. I mean, the rabbit was really scent marking, spraying everywhere. We found people like within 24 hours to adopt him. So he was only here with me for one day and I told them, just get him fixed. He's a bundle of love. He's wonderful, but you need to get him fixed right away. You know, if I didn't already have four rabbits, I would have kept him. I would have just gotten him fixed and we would have had a wonderful life together. He was so precious. And you know, I, I loved him so much that it's like, I miss him like heartbreaking missing, like wanting to hold him, wanting to have him jump into my arms and hold him. But I, I knew that the, the right thing to do was to give him to them because I have four and my rabbits are very well behaved. It actually made me appreciate them. They're very well behaved. They're, they're cuddly too, but they're not as interactive. Four bunnies is enough, but wow, I really love Gromito and I have the number of the people who took him and sometimes I, I want to just text them. I did it once, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to bother them, but I miss him so much that I want to text them and be like, how's my little Gromito? And if you're wondering how we got this name, I called him Gremlin, which turned into Gromo, which turned into Gromito. And then these people adopted him and they're Russian. And they said, it's funny because in Russian, Gromit means like to trash things. So Gromito would be like one who trashes everything. And we had a huge laugh because he trashed everything. He trashed the room. He shit everywhere and he sprayed pee. I mean, like I said, it was unmanageable. So I was like, well, I certainly picked the right name for him without even having any idea what it means. So they kept the name Gromito. <laughs> I miss him so much. Okay, I want to show you a little something. So here I've got my two 
what I call the babies. Well, that that's their crate, but see, it's open now because they're going to be free range rabbits. So here's the cool thing. My rabbits are super well trained. I trained Mo to come in here to get his dinner because I would reward him with food when he'd come in. Plus, I always give him his dinner at the same time in the other room. So eventually he knew like, oh, it's the time for food and I'm going to go in the other room. He like put two and two together. So now every day at around five o'clock, he'll come in here. I'll give him his food. I'll close the door and then I'll go out there and I'll let the younger ones out and they get to run around until we go to bed, which is like at 11 or midnight. And then when Mo wants to go home, he jumps up on the bed and of course, it's not really why I'm sending him home, but I like that he's he's kind of trained like to give me this signal. He goes up on the on the chair or the bed, and I come in and go, "Oh, you want to go home?" And I pick him up and I take him there. And the the young ones, um, when it's time for them to go in their cage, I don't have to chase them or anything. I just literally go, "Snow, twinkle, go home," and they know and they run. And they run back in their cage because they, they know it means they're going to get fed. I mean, I just train them with food and it works super well. Rabbits are smart. This is Gunner's rabbit. So this is little Miss Vusi. She's a good girl. She's free range all the time. And she, she wakes me up at night though sometimes. She jumps on my bed. She's such a good girl though. She'll jump up and, you know, she'll lie down next to me. She'll cuddle. I'll wake up and I'll see she's lying stretched out next to my feet like a like a dog you know she's so cool here's your dinner haram. spaghetti here it's not haram so not halal mood dear god thank you for this food bless to our bodies we thank you for providing for us please help us to trust you and to be blessings to other people and bless our evening in jesus name amen amen Hello, fam. Your dinner is served. Really time for dinner. Well, you don't have to eat it right now, but I mean. How was the timing of that? Was the, just... It's spaghetti. Yeah. Don't complain. And look, little chocolate cookies for you. Nice. I'm very proud of Aaron for making it to the doctor on time. He got pills. He got cream. And they used a, an iPhone to do an ultrasound. Yeah, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. I, like, you said I'm going to do an ultrasound. I, I went, what? How's he gonna do an ultrasound? He's got a big expensive machine in this clinic. Comes in with a, like a little, a little uh, iPhone and, the, and then the, the apparatus that scans on a wire so you plug it into the, the USB of the phone. That's it. That's amazing. I mean, That's it's cool. Amazing. Amazing how much those phones do besides brainwashing and tracking everybody. It's, they're absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the ultrasound. That's amazing. Yeah. I got to go up and eat though. Okay. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay. Bye, you guys, in case I don't see you. Again. Oh, you will because I'll be back down okay. after nine. Okay. okay. I'm wearing my corset in the hall. It's like I don't even care. Neighbors are gonna see me like this in the elevator. Mm. I feel like I should be doing something else. You know, like there's always something to do. I kind of want a break. Two, four, five. No, I'm sorry, that room is unoccupied. What? That's impossible. You checked us in there yourself. Wow. Oh, that's great. Good news, man. I just fixed Aaron's window. Now I have to swab the pillowcase. And uh, while I do that, Aaron is going to make the magic uh, box with the talking pictures work for me. Yes, I can watch murder shows while I do my sewing. Where's the teenager? There he is. Gunner, show me, come here, show me your boots. Look at the nice boots he has. Army boots. Like, doesn't he look like a total badass now? Today we're sewing up an old pillow with the thread that's about as thick as a piece of dental floss. Sometimes you gotta use the pliers. Okay. There we go.
We have to fix the computer now. Oopsies, I broke the computer. Oh, very, very dirty. I'm gonna have to clean this. Wait. Okay, it's clean now. I know it doesn't really look clean, but that's as clean as it can get. It's better. But you, you fixed the magic box. Yeah, that's what part of it, but I need the other tile there. I cleaned your bathroom. Good. Oh God, now I have to hang the curtain. Yeah, See, like for we'll... some reason, we still don't have a real curtain here. Where's your, uh, yeah, I know. your sheet that you hang up there? Oh, this. I know it's bad. Like, look, this landlord, he doesn't take care of anything. The place is like, I did this floor, by the way. See all this, this, this floor, like all this whole area here in the middle. There were no tiles. I put all these tiles back. I sanded this whole room. And then like within a few weeks, it all went dark again because of the tires. Except for this part, I redid it again. Just the entrance, see how the entrance is like lighter? I sanded that, I sanded this whole living room. I, uh, I put all the tiles back here, sanded it, glossed it. Look, it looks like black anyway. And over here, this is the part that I just did. It's not finished. See, like I put all those tiles back and when I do that I, I see like the tiles are all broken like this and uh, we can't get new ones I don't know why like we, we can't figure out where to get them the landlord won't give them to us so I have to take them apart and I have to sand all the pieces and then I have to do this like I put them on the floor and I, I have to like arrange them and I have to sand them in such a way that they fit and then I glue them and like this is all glued and then I can uh, I can sand it. Where do you get parquet tiles like this in Montreal? Let me know, because I couldn't figure it out. I went to Home Depot. I went to like three or four places. So I just sand the tiles, you know? Okay, so uh, let's see. How, what happens when you curtain. take a lethal amount of sign? I do want to put up a real curtain. Like I have a, I have a thing for my mom, but I can't figure out how to do it. This is horrible. This like, seriously, it's like so hobo. I really want you to have a normal curtain. I hate dealing with this. There's something wrong here. It's like yeah, I know. This is total shit. No, but it doesn't fit now. We thought that we were uh, off the hook, and we came up here to go to bed, and it's like almost midnight. We hear a knock at the door, and I'm like, seriously, I hope that's the cops. I hope it's not your dad. I don't want to have to do anything more. Anyone. And it's his. It's his dad. It's Aaron. And we're like, what do you want? He's like. I want cheese. That's what I give him, the good cheese, carry gold cheese. And he's like, I want, I want, I want the sprinkle cheese. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, uh you know, sprinkle. Like, what, you coming up here at midnight? You want Parmesan? You want the, uh, uh, the grated, grated cheese. Grated. <laughs> and he's like, no, you know, the one in the package. He wants the Mexican cheese. So We're going to bed now. Can he say goodnight? Thanks for joining us for our day. <laughs> Oh my god. Thank you. Take your bunny and go night night. Thank you for joining me with my cleaning escapades and the rude men in my family. And I'll see you next time!